everyone. My name is Elizabeth, and uh, I like to play cello, which I learned from fourth grade uh, and got to play up through high school and even a little bit in college and when I moved to Baltimore, which was where I got to meet uh, all my really cool orchestra friends. Um, and today I'm going to hopefully give you some tips about the third excerpt for the string orchestra uh, cello section excerpts and uh, this one is from Dance Diabolique uh, by James O. Um, and uh, I hope that I can help you guys out a little bit. So first I'm just gonna play the whole excerpt. Um, I'll try and keep it at the roughly the actual tempos and then I'll break it down a little bit for you guys. So here's uh, roughly what it might sound like if you played it at the actual tempo. <laughs> that I noticed when I was going through this excerpt was that you just want to be careful where you get to the pizzicatos in uh, bars 73 to 76 just because they're actually off the beat right so it tells us that our beat is a uh, dotted quarter note at 82 um, so if you're trying to play it like that it's actually going to be one and uh, two and uh, right so you're starting off the beat and then you land on the two um, the reason that this might be a spot to watch out for is because if you forget to count then you'll end up behind the beat and if you uh, hopefully if you try and count um, you will make sure not to rush um, I know sometimes as cellos we you like to rush a little bit. Um, so counting is really important there. Um, and I'll tell you, I kind of had to play around with those bars a little bit myself before I had them exactly right. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out was in bar, I think it's 77, where you get back to uh, the harmony. Um, you have a little shift there, right? So it goes... Um, <laughs> So for me, I play that as, you know, open string and two for the C natural, and then I actually shift up to play the E on a two, and then the D on a one. Um, that's just how I do it. That's more comfortable for me. Um, and then I shift back on bar 78 to regular first position with C, B, C, B. Um, another way that could be helpful for you guys, um, it really just depends on what your preference is and uh, if it's easier for you to keep in tune this way is you could do... Um, so you could do keep your first finger on the C and you can tune based off your open C that helps me a lot to use my open strings and you can go uh, like extended four to get to the E so it sounds a little bit like this and then you can shift back so I'll just do that again it could be like and uh, that might be an easier way for you guys to keep in tune. Um, I find that when I extend my pinky finger, I'm usually a little bit out of tune just because I have small hands, so I tend to just make the jump. 
Um, and then lastly, you know, uh, just try and keep an eye out for the little, you know, rhythm stuff. They have a lot of uh, staccatos and a couple little slurs and just practice that carefully because I know sometimes I get tripped up and I sometimes I'll play like, uh, for example, in bar 70. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to sound, right? It's supposed to be a longer first note, and then a staccato, and then a slur, and then another staccato. Um, but sometimes I could play it with everything staccato, just because I'm I'm thinking too hard about staccatos, or I might slur the first two notes, and then not slur the next two notes. Um, and so just be careful of those little pieces there. Um, and lastly, um, do your best to keep your dynamics in. Sometimes I get really excited and, you know, I play louder and louder. Um, and so I always have to pay attention really hard to remember to uh, drop to a piano where it says in measure, I think, 73, although my phone's in the way, so it might be bar 72. Um, and then do that crescendo, right? So you start from forte and then you drop and then you kind of build up again. Um, and so let me just move my phone for a second. Um, so, you know, you kind of end on, a, on your bow and then you go, whoops, sorry. where my <laughs> pinky gets out of tune. Um, so hopefully you notice, you know, I had a little bit of crescendo there. I'll just do it again for you guys since I was out of tune. Oops. Right? So you just want to try and uh, make that gradual crescendo when you're going through. Um, and when you pay attention to all that stuff, the dynamics, the tempo markings, and the uh, bowings, uh, you know, it just makes your, your audition stand out more, right? It, it helps you to kind of stand out from the crowd. Um, in terms of bowing, uh, for example, bar 1 and bar 71, um, I normally start... Uh, the bowing with a down bow, so it looks like this for the first measure. Um, you could start if you wanted to with an up bow. Um, it would just go like this for the next three. So that's kind of your preference too. It's easier to start forte, I find, on a down bow. Um, so you might just want to start with a normal down bow there for you guys. Um, so I hope that helps, um, and uh, good luck with your auditions, guys. Thanks.